always have a plan, study it, and then execute if you wanna reach for your dreams. Join us today with Mr. Billy Robbins of Robbins Nest. Hi, good morning. This is Carl Cuesta with Assisted Living Facility Rookie. How are you doing? Doing good. How are you? Excellent and blessed, Mr. Billy. For those that don't know you, can you tell us about yourself? Sure. Yeah. So my name is Billy Robbins. I am the owner and operator of an assisted living facility in the big city of Borger, Texas. If you don't know where that is, that is northeast of Amarillo, Texas. If you don't know where that is, just find the Texas Panhandle, look right in the center of the Texas Panhandle, and we're just about 45 minutes northeast of that. So that's uh, excellent. The facility is Robin's Nest Assisted Living. So like, tell us a little bit about Robin's Nest. Like what, how'd you get started? And uh, like, what was your thought process behind doing this whole thing? Yeah, so the story goes way back to... Um, about six, seven years ago, my wife and I were on a family trip and mm -hmm. we were driving home. My wife, her name is Brittany Robbins. She is, um, she's an RN. She's been in long-term care for a mm -hmm. long time. Um, and we were driving back from this family vacation and she said, you know, I'm so tired of these nursing homes that have all of these residents and so few staff and i wish there was something that we could do to um like have our own facility where we only have a couple of residents and uh, i can only take care of just so many residents and then it's a whole lot better care and just the quality of life would be better and so as we're driving we thought well let's Let's look into it. Let's find out what does it take to start an assisted living facility. And, Excellent. Um, you know, several years of that went by and, and we found a building and we bought the building. And uh, now we have a, a 16 bed licensed facility in the state of Texas. That's excellent. Like from, let's say from the thought of doing it until actually purchasing the building, how long did that take? Like, like that was like, place. that was, that was like <clears throat> four years. Okay. Uh, COVID happened in the middle of that. Ah, that'll do so it. So yeah. you can, you can imagine like we were looking at, are we going to build a building or are we going to buy a building and then COVID hits. And so it was like, I don't, there's a lot of lenders that aren't really wanting to go into healthcare at that time. Um, and so we kind of nix the whole let's build a facility and then we just stumbled upon uh, an existing facility in border texas that they were closing and she had already gotten rid of all of her residents um it was an old dilapidated building but we were able to come in buy the facility uh do a complete remodel of the facility and and get it opened back up so that's excellent that. so four years did um in terms of lending, I, I do want to point out there's different types. Like what, which way did you guys go for lending? Yeah. So we, we ended up, um, we have a separate company called mm -hmm. Robbins Holdings and Robbins Holdings is our real estate investment company. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. And so we, we got a typical commercial mortgage to purchase the facility um, through our holding company. Gotcha. Uh, and then obviously we have a separate company that is our operations. And so we lease the building from uh, our holding company. Uh, and so it was just a traditional commercial mortgage that we were able to get on the property. Um, there wasn't any kind of special provisions that had to be had to be made because it was just a real estate purchase. We weren't buying the business. We were only buying real estate. So commercial mortgage was able to take care of it for us. That's excellent. Yeah, right now I'm I'm looking at some rates. Like, there's a lender. I, I know they usually ask for like more than twenty percent down, but I just met a lender like two weeks ago or something like that. He's saying ten percent down, which just but just a little bit. Um, his interest rates are a lot better. So I was like, okay, well, uh, hey, yeah. if your interest rates are better, like slightly better than everybody somehow, and you're asking for ten percent only, like, hey, I think yeah, I that's think a great deal. I think Especially right now in the market that we're in, because interest rates, 
they're starting to come down a little bit, but yeah, they're not they're nearly good. as as low as they were when we bought. When we, uh -huh. we bought, we got a really good deal. We got a really good interest rate. 20, 20 year mortgage. Um, okay. So worked that's, out really well for us. That's perfect. That's perfect. Um, so four years of studying assisted living, like, and then you finally got it started. Like, what did you um like how did you guys go about like marketing people? Because I've I've scoped out uh Burger Texas. It's a it's it's a it's a cute little outskirt town. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, marketing is a challenge. And, yeah. and I don't I don't care if you're in Burger, Texas or if you're in Houston, Texas. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, yeah. Marketing is tough. Yeah. Uh, the competition in our area isn't nearly as um competitive as I, as you would say probably somewhere in the Houston market. Mm -hmm. uh, we have we have a hospital within about a mile of where we're located. Um, we have two long-term facilities, so uh, skilled skilled nursing facilities that are in our area. Um, and and that's about the extent of competition that we have. We're the only assisted living facility in the city. Yes. Um, and within about a 45 mile radius, there's, there's not, there's not, but maybe one assisted living facility in a 45 mile radius. So yeah, we don't exactly. have a lot of competition, which is good in some ways. Um, marketing is still a difficult thing. I mean, we go to the hospital, we leave, we leave marketing materials with the hospital, we leave marketing materials with the, the skilled care facilities, um, home health. I, I'll tell you, that's probably been our biggest uh, source of referrals is home health agencies mm -hmm. because there's probably five home health agencies that are in our area. And my wife just has a long history with the marketers from these home health agencies. And so um, she'll get that information out to the home health agencies. And when a home health nurse finds that they have a resident that's at home and uh, they're receiving home health uh, assistance, but they need to be somewhere else. They're not quite ready for a, a nursing home, but they know they need assistance. Mm -hmm. um, they'll call, call us and, and they know about us. And so we get a lot of referrals from our, our home health um, uh, industry and then doctor's offices. I mean, we've got several general practice doctors that are right here in the area. In fact, we have one that shares a back door with us, like right yeah. across the alley from us is one of our general doctors. And uh, he sends us a lot of referrals. And so um, that's been our marketing strategy is really just hitting up those those areas. And, and it's it's been pretty good for us. And that's good. That that I can imagine that probably takes about like 20 to 40 hours a week just doing that alone, you know. It's uh Yeah, if, if you want to keep up with it and do it the right way, it is it's a time-consuming thing for sure. Yeah, like I I've just recently started doing it for a, another business venture and I'm like, wow, like no wonder they pay people for this. This is a this is a full-time Yeah. Job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's great. That's great. So you you got you got a loan that you needed. Um, you did some marketing, and the patients started coming. Um, yeah. What is like a common challenge that you usually face, and is there a solution for it? Yeah, the, the common challenge is money. <laughs> um, I mean, I think I think everybody probably has this challenge, and and that's you know one of the things that my wife and I went into this business deciding to do was. Uh, we didn't want to turn anybody away. We, mm -hmm. we know that there's people out there that are living on social security mm -hmm. that they don't have, they didn't plan for life. They don't have long-term care insurance. They, they don't have the ability to get um, VA benefits or, or, or anything like that. And so uh, because of the type of facility that we are, we do not take Medicare slash Medicaid we are a self-pay or insurance um, from long-term care or VA benefits only. Mm -hmm. And so that's been the biggest challenge because we have people that come in and they're like, I'm on social security and I pay this much for my insurance and I, I have a thousand dollars left over and I'll give you a thousand dollars a month if we can stay here in your facility. And my wife and I will be like, okay, 
well, we'll take you because we, we don't want to turn anybody away necessarily. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but then we have those residents that come in and that pay full price. And mm -hmm. so, you know, they're, they're paying uh, the, the full amount because they planned or they, they've had the, the money set aside or they have long-term care insurance or whatever. Um, but, th but that's been the biggest challenge is, is figuring out uh, how to, to operate a business when you your some of your residents aren't paying the amount that you need in order to make the bottom line come mm -hmm. out where you want the bottom line to come. Um, we we've, we've been very lucky. Uh, we we have about eight residents right now, and those range anywhere from paying full price to paying eight hundred dollars a month. Um, it just depends on the resident, but. We're we're making we're making ends meet. We're we're paying bills. We're paying employees. We're buying groceries. I mean, the the thing is still running. Um, would would we be much more successful if everybody came in and paid full price? Uh, absolutely. But uh, that's been the biggest challenge that that we've had to face is uh, is 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 money. It's coming down to residents being able to afford an assisted living facility whenever they may be on Medicaid uh, or Medicare. And we don't, we don't take that, that type of insurance. So uh, that's, that is our biggest challenge. You know, that one, one thing that stood out when I first talked to you, Mr. Billy was uh, I feel like you have a very, very generous and like giving heart. So I, yeah. I, I, I hundred percent, a thousand percent, Hope you succeed in this in this you overcome this challenge. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I do know that there's some, you know, there's there's some things that uh you are working on that we are working on. But uh yeah, you know, just 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 from me to you, like man, I a hundred percent wish you like more prosperity coming up. <laughs> awesome. Know? Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Well, um what so Regarding your, uh, you like you're like the only one in that such in such a big radius, and yeah. I scoped out your facility. Um, it's it's made for that. It, it's it's perfectly made for an assisted living facility. Like, what yeah. are what are some things? Even though you don't have much competition, what do you think is some things that sets you apart from everyone else that's like, trying to get up in that area? Yeah. So. The couple of things that we do, um, one is we're licensed for 16 residents, mm. but we've we've decided that it's a better living experience for everybody to have a private room. Mm. And so even though we are licensed for 16, we have the square footage to put two people in some of these rooms. Mm -hmm. um, we made a decision a long time ago that we're only going to take 10 residents. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's one person per room unless there's a married couple that comes in you know you you get somebody it's uh, you know mr and mrs jones and they they want to both move into a room we might end up with 11 but for the most part our idea is we want it to be personal and we want everybody to have their own private room private space for them to live in it, it, it's just to me, it's a better quality of life. So that's one thing that we offer uh, that, you know, our competition, which is like our skilled nursing facilities, uh, they can't offer that. They, they mm -hmm. can offer private rooms, but it's expensive. It's yes. really expensive to get a private room. I mean, skilled nursing in general is expensive, but if you want a private room, it's really expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's that's one thing that, that we kind of stands us apart is we give everybody a private room. Um, the other, the other thing about us is we, where we're located, there's a lot of doctor's offices right around us. And mm -hmm. so we're, we're set up so people can, you know, let's say they move from another town to come into our facility. Um, we can get them set up with a primary care doctor that's a hundred feet away from our building. Wow. Uh, and, and we've even had those doctors come over and do visits in the facility. And so we have a relationship with them where the there's doctors and, and especially some of the doctors, PAs, they'll come in once a month and do visits once a month in our facility um, 
inside the facility. So the patients don't even have to leave the facility mm -hmm. to have their checkups and to see a doctor um, or a nurse practitioner. And so, you know, they can prescribe meds, change meds as needed, different things like that without them ever having to even leave the facility. And so that's something that we offer uh, that you you kind of see that in a skilled nursing facility. Mm -hmm. A lot of us living facilities don't do that. They don't have yeah. that. Like if you want to go to the doctor, then we'll set up transportation for you or, or we'll work with your your family. We'll help you schedule the appointment, but you got to go to the appointment. Um, for primary care, we try to handle all of that in-house and let our nurse practitioners and doctors take care of those patients. So they don't have to leave. They can just have their stuff done right there in the facility. So that's kind of another thing that sets us apart. From yeah, that, that's, that's excellent. And facility. you're right. A, a, a lot of people don't, a lot of facilities don't do that. And uh, I'm glad you're doing that. And that's, that's one of the things we're trying to do as well here in Houston, but Great, great, uh, great collaboration right there. I love that. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mr. Billy. In terms of the best way to reach you, how would our viewers reach out to you to learn more about you to to get maybe a a friend or family member in your facility? Yeah. So Robin's Nest Assisted Living dot com is our website. Mm -hmm. uh, you can visit us there. Um, I, I'll give you my cell phone number. I, I have my cell phone number is out posted and I give it to anybody and everybody. Uh, my, my other job is a pastor. And so I'm a pastor of a church. And so my phone is available 24 seven for anybody. Uh, but it's 806. That's area code 806-290-7181. And you can get a hold of me. And I'd love to visit with you about your family member. I'd love to visit with you about challenges maybe you have an assisted living facility and you're experiencing some challenges or you don't know what your next steps are. I'd love to visit with you and show you what we've done to be successful as just a little mop and pop shop that me and my wife are operating. Um, and, and yeah, I'd love to, love to visit with you. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Billy. And uh, we'll reach out to you and hope, hopefully we get you some people in there. Awesome. Thanks, Carl. Appreciate it. Thank you.